On today's Safety Zone, I'd like to talk about improving the safety on highway projects. Data from the BLS indicates from 2003 to 2015, 1,571 workers lost their lives on road construction sites. The number of fatal work-related injuries at road construction sites averaged 121 per year. To talk about this, I'm joined by David Fosbrook, statistician at the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. David, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you. So, David, let's talk about some of the hazards workers are having on the highway and other zones that we talk about. Um, well, workers in road construction are exposed to a variety of hazards. Uh, of course, they drive over the road like the rest of us, so one of the hazards is being involved in motor vehicle crashes. Uh, the other involves, major one involves being involved in vehicles running into workers um, or a variety of vehicle and equipment incidents, such as rollovers and those sorts of things. So when you talk about this and you say that they're put into these hazardous situations, why are we seeing so many of these hazardous kind of situations happening on the roadways? Are we doing more things to protect them, or is it just that this is kind of going to continue to happen because we have construction? Uh, that's really a two-part question, so I'm going to answer them in two different parts. Um, the nature of construction work puts workers in proximity to moving vehicles and equipment. The motorists that drive through the work zone, as well as operating dump trucks and loaders and, and other types of uh, paving equipment, for example. Uh, so that's kind of what places workers in those hazards. That doesn't mean that it's inevitable that we're going to have workers who are killed in roadway work zones. There are some things that can be done, and um, there are some things that NIOSH has looked at in the past, and there are things that industry is doing right now that are looking to improve safety for workers in work zones. So are we doing things right now? You said there are things that can be done. So what can be done to prevent, you know, fatalities and even injuries in work zones? Okay, so when you look at um, the area that I've been doing most of my research in, it's been in the area of workers being struck by operating dump trucks and other types of construction equipment. One of the things you can do is make workers really aware of the visibility limits of the operator of that equipment. So if you have workers who are on the ground who have to work around um, moving equipment, the more they understand what the driver or the operator can see, the better. So NIOSH developed a series of blind area diagrams for, um, for dump trucks, for front end loaders, for uh, shuttle buggies and whatnot, different types of pieces of equipment. And we have them on our website. And those blind area diagrams can be used by construction companies as a training tool so that workers who are on the ground have a better idea of what are the equipment operators are having to deal with. So what actually are we talking about when you discuss these blind area diagrams? Are they specific locations on a construction site when you're talking about that? Actually, there are specific areas around an individual piece of a construction equipment where the operator cannot see either through direct line of sight or with the use of their mirrors, what's behind them. So this is one of the things you can do to help prevent people from being backed over by construction equipment. So it sounds like you could use that for training right now as these blind area diagrams. Absolutely. They can be downloaded off of our website and they can be used, for example, in toolbox talks. Some other creative things that some construction companies have done with the blind area diagrams are to take them and make a decal out of them so it serves as a reminder to ground workers. And another thing you can do is you can have those diagrams uh, drawn at scale to uh, scale construction equipment, you know, 1 to 32 scale or 1 to 50 scale construction equipment, so that you can lay that piece of construction equipment on top of that diagram, and it gives a really nice visual for construction workers to see, kind of, well, if I'm standing here, am I going to be able to see or not be able to see by the, uh, by the operator? So are there other things that you can suggest besides blind area diagrams that should be done when we're talking about using heavy equipment? Yes, uh, NIOSH began um, in 2001 looking at a couple of other interventions in highway construction work zones, one of which is the internal traffic control plan and the other are the use of proximity warning devices. And these are both strategies that have been used to try to reduce the exposure of workers on site. 
to backing, um, or for that matter, even moving forward, construction vehicles and equipment. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the internal traffic control plans first. Some of the basic premises of the internal traffic control plan are to limit the amount of backing that needs to take place on the job site by organizing the workflow on the, uh, on the job site. Another principle is to kind of minimize the conflict, if you will, or the, the amount of time that workers spend in the areas where equipment has to move. So those are just kind of a couple of examples. Um, and by setting up these internal traffic control plans, you can, again, reduce the amount of time that workers are where the equipment operators can't see them. Did you see significant results by doing these? I mean, because you both of these kind of studies and plans that you have, are you seeing positive results by doing them? Uh, for the internal traffic control plans, we saw mixed results. So we went out to a series of seven sites, and we did um, the internal traffic control plan on seven sites, and on seven other sites we did what we call a control, where we did not have the internal traffic control plan implemented. And in a couple of those sites, we saw significant reductions of the amount of time that workers were exposed to uh, what we call the hazardous areas around pieces of construction equipment. In several other sites, we really didn't see any difference. And in one site, we saw an increase. Now, in spite of this kind of mixed result, we have found that there are some companies that are trying to refine those, those internal traffic control plan concepts so that they can try to improve safety on their job sites. Well, David, we're running out of time. Where can our viewers go to get more information and see these results and all the other things that you guys are doing right now? Sure. Um, NIOSH has a web page that's the Highway Work Zone uh, Safety web page. If you just Google NIOSH Highway Work Zone Safety, it will go direct you directly to the link. Um, well, David, thank you so much. David Fosbrook, you are the statistician at the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're most welcome. All right. That's our safety zone for today.